Previously on Sleeping with Wolves. As I said before, you notice footprints in the snow and in the mud. Yeah, you really do start to switch on to uh, the world around you, so it's really interesting how your instincts start to, uh, to come back out from their deepest hiding places. So I found a spot here where I'm going to uh, stop and make some food, and I've been thinking, I'm making a video here for you guys. The weather today, if you look around, it's, um, there is going to be zero visibility on the summit, and there's a chance, according to the weather forecast, that tomorrow it could be a bit brighter. And to be honest, also for myself, you know, I'd like to see the views from the top of the mountain rather than just stand there in the uh, in the cloud and think, oh, nice one. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here, make some food, and then I'm going to make myself really comfortable tonight. I'm going to use this area here as my little base. It's quite close to a maintained path and they've been cutting some trees. So I've got a good supply of firewood here. But bearing in mind that we're not in the United States, I don't have a rifle with me. so. I'm gonna be cautious in terms of the wolf situation. I've been in these situations before. I know that in the middle of the night, four in the morning, or actually I've looked at the moon forecast for tonight and um, well, apart from the cloud, which will have a big effect, but there's, there's around 60% of moon. Moon rise is 0140. So from then I'll have some light, but I've been caught out with that before, by the way. I, I once checked for the moonlight for a, a crossing in a little sailing boat and I saw that it was 80% moon or something. So I thought, wow, I'm gonna see loads. What I didn't check was the moonrise time and it didn't rise till three in the morning. So from when the sun set till three in the morning, we had zero veers. It was interesting for our first uh, big trip. Anyway, I'm blabbering now. So I'm going to get my little camp set up here. I'm going to protect myself uh, behind me. I'm going to make a little barricade almost of sticks just so that, that I've got that kind of area behind me under control. And then that's going to leave just the entrance here for me to be wary of and I'm going to build a fire and I'm going to keep the fire maintained as best as I can. So that's my plan. So I'm going to get some clothes on now because once you stop ascending you soon start to cool right down and then I'm going to get some food on. Just started gathering some rocks and stones here and uh, basically make, taking them over to make a base for the fire. So I'm going to be using some of these to support the pan that I'm going to be cooking in. And I've got a nice base of stones there. I'm going to continue to add to it. And once I've got the fire going, over time they'll absorb the heat from the fire and act as a heat store. So if the fire, when the fire dies down during the night, I'm going to be lying just here beside the fire. And when it dies down, of course I can I can add wood to it. But um, in the meantime, the stones will continue to radiate heat and help me to stay warm and cosy. They also have an added bonus of being throwable. So obviously not the ones that are boiling hot, that would be quite funny, but if I'm lying in my bed and some animal comes along and I want to get rid of them, then I'll have, I'm gonna have my ice axe with me as well. And I'm gonna have a nice stock of throwable sized stones just because you never know why take chances, eh? So I've been here at my little camp for um, about 40 minutes now. And I can tell you what, time flies when you're chopping wood with an ice axe. A lot of it's quite damp, so I'm not sure exactly how well it will burn, but time will tell. Now, I've just been collecting some, uh, some tinder for the fire, which is this, this grass here. It's obviously very damp here. It's, it's been snowing recently and uh, still cloudy and damp. And I've been picking up um, some of the leaf litter as well, just the very top leaves that are here that are fairly dry. Now I've got several options here for fire. Initially I'm going to be trying a fire stone and this natural tinder that I've got here. If that doesn't work then I've got some uh, tampons with me. You basically just pull them apart and they become quite a large volume of cotton wool which is perfect kindling. And then if the, if all else fails I've also got a, uh, a gas stove. Now I say a gas stove, I was going to buy a gas stove but then I thought you know what I've already got a, uh, a blowtorch, so I brought my blowtorch, didn't buy a gas stove. So um, in the worst case, if this doesn't work, then I've got my blowtorch to cook my pasta on. So always have a backup, eh? <laughs> Here I have my fire stone. I saw a guy on a loan who lost his fire stone and uh, had to go home because of it. So be very careful with them, don't lose them. I've got mine inside my pocket and I also tie it to the, to the outside with its lanyard. So. Uh, hopefully I won't lose it easily. So this is the all-natural way. I have no idea if this is going to work. To be honest with you, I think 
This may be the first time in my entire life I've ever used a Firestone, so let's see what happens. Okay, so first attempt is a fail. Do you know what guys, I've spent a while now looking for the, uh, the tampons, which I did bring. They must be somewhere, but I'm, I'm bored of looking for them. Um, I've cheated, I've had a cereal bar, so I've had a little bit of food now, but I'm getting pretty hungry, so I'm gonna stop wasting time. I'm going to have another crack here with a couple of tissues, and then if it doesn't start now, I'm just going to cheat and I'm going to use my blowtorch to get it going, so hey. May have done it. I'm going to stop the camera now only because I'm going to run out of battery and I'm not going to be able to show you anything else that's happening. So I think I've got that there, guys. I've got a pretty good fire going there now. Uh, I promise you I didn't use the blowtorch. So not bad, eh, for a, for a beginner. Um, so I'm now going to get some water on and get myself some pasta. Oh, yes, pasta. And um, fire, it really is, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but when you're, in a, when you're out on your own, for morale, fire really is, it's, it's magical. It really does, um, it makes you feel so comfortable straight away. When you're somewhere like this, it really is beautiful. So I've got some pasta on the go here, guys. Well, I've got some water on the go. I'm gonna have some pasta very soon. I did bring some um, bolognese uh, ragu, as they call it in Italy. Um, but I'm not gonna be eating that. There are two reasons for that. One, um, opening the cans I think would attract animals and I'm not too keen on that. Um, I've got an alternative which is olive oil mixed with a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna go for that option. The second reason is I forgot to bring a knife and fork so I'm not gonna be eating bolognese sauce with my fingers. I'll just have pasta with oil. Pasta's nicely on the boil there. Um, I'm gonna take this opportunity to spend some time now. I'm not gonna be on camera for a while. I'm going to be going and collecting some sticks I'm going to make effectively a defensive position. So I've got, you know, everything, the situation under control, really. The pasta's done, guys. Um, is it good enough quality to give to my Italian in-laws? Nah. Is it good enough to give me the energy to go up and down the mountain? Yes, so that's fine. Um, you don't... Food isn't that big a deal, honestly, when you're doing something like this. Um, you can last a long time without food. Weeks, in fact. Water is extremely important. We've got snow here, so if you've got a, a method of uh, melting the snow, then 
There you are, you're pretty much sorted. But yeah, I've, I've actually been for nine days once with only water, without a single thing passing my lips, not even so much as a piece of chewing gum. Um, and yeah, I was able to continue expending energy. It was quite surprising how much energy I had, and it's incredible that the human body's got the capability to do this. Anyway, I'm gonna stop the video. I don't wanna keep filming because I might run out of battery and then that would be a nightmare. Right, I'm gonna eat my pasta when it cools down and carry on with my little den building. I'm just uh, eating my pasta at the moment. I didn't put anything in it, it's just plain pasta. Uh, I didn't want to add any smells or whatever to attract animals, so I'm just eating it as it is. I'm trying not to get water, the water from the pasta everywhere. And actually afterwards, I'm gonna drink the water as well. Again, just to have as, as little as possible here to attract animals. It's actually cleared up, so I'll come and get the camera and give you a view. I've only just seen myself for the first time what it actually looks like around here without the clouds, so I'll, uh, I'll show you that. There's my tripod, made out of twigs. Um, so, I've just seen over here. You can see. There we are. It's quite nice when you can see what's going on. Some more footsteps here. Fairly small animal. Anyway, so everything's good. I'm glad I made the decision to, to do this. I've got time now. You know, once dark, darkness starts to descend, the atmosphere can change a little bit. So I'm going to spend the time wisely now and try and make myself as comfortable as possible. And then tomorrow, hopefully, I'll wake up and uh, it'll be a nice day and I'll be able to give you a view from the top of Monte Cousine as well. If you can hear that, so I've just uh, finished eating my pasta and it's just started to rain, so I'm going to uh, set up my little shelter. I'm just putting up my poncho here. I'm a bit limited as to what I can do with the trees, but um, no problem. So you can, for example, here, it's not quite wide enough, as wide as I'd like it to be, so I've just got a big stick. And you can use that to alter the position of it and that helps with what I'm trying to achieve. Hi guys, it's uh, 20 to 9 at night. Uh, I've just been up the mountain a wee bit to get a signal to let my wife know that everything's okay. So yeah, I've uh, I've been making my little den. I'll show you that now. Hopefully you'll be able to see because the light is fading quite fast. Uh, oh god, it's really very difficult to see. There's my fire on the go. Um, I really hope you can see that above there. I've got the poncho set up in the trees. And I've just put a little hodgepodge. Oh god, it's really extremely dark. That's what I've been up to. I'll record again in a minute, but I'll try and get some light on the go somehow. I've got a torch shining here. We've got the fire. I've got some snow on the go. Just melting some snow for some more drinking water. I've made a kind of barrier type thing with uh, just branches basically around the majority of the, uh, of the perimeter where I'm sleeping. And then there's just a, an entrance here course it wouldn't necessarily stop anything from getting through but it would probably start to make noise and that would alert me and I can wake up and then I'm here this is my sleeping bag uh, bivy bag the white thing you see inside is just it's a sleeping bag liner and that's on a thermo rest which is a little blow-up mattress type affair and now I've got all my stuff beside me I've got my ice axe just because it makes me feel comfortable. I've got my, I uh, made a little spear. It's, it's a bit rubbish, but it's, uh, again, it's just nice to have these things to hand. <laughs> and now, uh, and I've got this thing above me, so. Uh, there we are, it's a bit of a tent type affair. I don't want to have a tent, to be honest, because in situations like this, it's nice to be able to look outside you know, if you hear a noise, you look and you see what it is. Whereas if you're stuck in a tent, you hear a noise and you just lie there thinking, oh my God, what is it? And do I open the tent or do I not? So at least this way, you've just got it open straight away. Um, anyway, so I'm just about to get in my bed and I've also got beside me my tin whistle and I'm going to uh, try and play a little tune before I uh, hit the sack. Got the fire here, got some spare firewood. See if I can keep it going through the night. <laughs> 